What's up guys, Matt Day here, and today I'm gonna take one of these Polaroids and cut it up and teach you guys how to do a Polaroid emulsion lift. If you don't know what an emulsion lift is, basically all you do is you cut open the Polaroid, submerge it in water so that way you can actually remove the emulsion from the plastic backing, and then all you have to do from there is transfer it onto something. There's a lot of different things you can transfer it to, but the most common thing would be paper, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So I haven't done this in a couple of years, so I'm wondering how easy it's going to be for me or if I can even still do it at all, but uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a shot, and I'm going to walk you guys through the entire process, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so just to quickly show you guys my setup here, I have two trays of water. This one has warm water in it and this one has cold water in it. You can actually do this with one tray of water. Uh, it doesn't have to be two separate ones, but whenever you're removing the emulsion, sometimes things can kind of flake off of the image and you'll see that in a little bit. And I basically just like to have clean water without anything like that in there whenever I'm transferring the emulsion onto the paper. So uh, this is just the way I do it. You can do it with just one tray though. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we have our Polaroids here, which I'm gonna go through and kind of pick one out. And we have some scissors to cut open the Polaroid. And we have this little brush set from Impossible Project. I bought this probably four years ago. Um, I don't know if they still make this. I haven't seen it on their website or in any kind of stores in a long time, so I don't think it's still available, but really you don't have to use this. I just bought it because of its convenience, but um, it's just different kind of brushes in here. And I, I'll go ahead and kind of show you what the brushes are like. It comes in this little wooden box, which I'll probably repurpose for other stuff, whether it be film or Polaroids or something, but um, you've got your little user manual here. It's not important. Really, what you need to look at are the brushes. Uh, you have all kinds of different brush sizes here for different uses and different things, um, but really it's just, you know, a good array of brushes. You have a few different sizes, some small brushes for really kind of like intricate stuff as you're moving the emulsion around, and then a couple bigger ones here as well just to kind of smooth things out and to kind of help separate the emulsion. So as long as you have some brushes, a few different sizes to work with, you don't have to be too particular. Um, you know, don't feel like you have to go out and buy anything expensive or, uh, you know, too specific. Um, and then we also just have some paper here. This is paper that I bought with the uh, brush set. It's basically just like little small pre-cut square pieces of paper and it's like watercolor paper. You want something that you're gonna be able to obviously submerge in the water and it's not just gonna fall apart. Um, and I just like these because it's, it's already pre-cut and it's a good size for uh, Polaroid images. So uh, we're gonna take the first one here and leave it off to the side for now. Uh, as far as the image I wanna use, I have a lot of Polaroids and I just kinda grabbed a handful that I thought might be kinda interesting for one of these. Um, I like landscapes for this kind of stuff, so let's just go with this one. This is a image that I shot in uh, North Carolina at Grandfather Mountain, and this is the one that we're gonna be using. And it's always kind of tricky, or uh, not really tricky, it's just it's something that you kind of have to be careful about when you're choosing because um, if you mess up the image and your you know emulsion lift doesn't go as planned, then you just ruined that one of a kind image. So uh, you know choose carefully, but really it's not too difficult. Although of course I say that, so I'm probably going to mess this up. But the first thing you want to do is you just want to cut these uh, edges off of the frame here, and that's actually going to basically expose all the layers that are inside just one of these images. And you know once you can actually access those, that's how you get to the emulsion. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off. You don't have to be too particular. You know, these edges here, they're not holding the image itself. So as long as you just cut these off, you're good. And I've seen some people do it different ways. I've seen people do it where they don't use scissors at all. They just kind of peel at the paper backing and like the, the paper wrapping, I guess. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like I said, you'll see all kinds of different ways to do it online if you do some research, but I'm just gonna show you what I've done and you know what's worked for me, but feel free to try out different things, obviously. Um, so now you can actually kind of break apart the layers now that it's cut, and you can see there. So this is just like black, um, this like black plastic. I'm not sure exactly what it is that you would see on the back of the image, and then this is where the emulsion is on top of, or actually underneath this plastic layer. And you're gonna see all of that kind of break apart here in just a little bit. Now, 
This part of the process takes a little bit of time, but it's, it, I, in my opinion, it helps if the water is a little bit warmer. Um, I've seen people use boiling water. This isn't boiling water, it's just warm water that I heated up in the microwave for about a minute, minute and a half. And um, if, as you can see, hopefully in the video there, we've already got some stuff flaking off of the image. And it's almost like this white, chalky kind of uh, texture. And if we flip the image over, you'll see more of that on the back here. And it, it almost like it, it kind of starts bubbling and cracking, almost looking like um, old cracked uh, lead paint that you would see on like old farm doors, things like that. That's kind of like what the texture looks like. And you can use these brushes with the bigger, uh, bigger ends on there to kind of, kind of move things along. And I honestly, I don't do, I try not to put too much pressure on the actual surface itself. I try to use the brush to kind of help throw water underneath it. And uh, that definitely helps whenever it comes to actually applying it uh, to the paper. And I'll show you some of that in a little bit. But now you can see in this one, this little edge here has started to lift up. Now, as I throw and just kind of brush more water towards it, I'm not actually touching it, but obviously that water is getting underneath the emulsion there and that's helping it separate even more. So that's what I'm talking about when I say I try not to put too much pressure on the surface itself because, you know, it's, it's fairly tough, but I've definitely ripped emulsion several times. So I try not to be too rough with it. Um, although I do like to have a little bit more of a rough and uh, kind of distressed kind of look when I'm doing these. Some people try to get things nice and perfectly flat whenever they transfer it, uh, and, th and that looks fine. I just, I prefer, I think, just to see the fact that it is, you know, something physical on there, and it's, you know, uh, it's going to have some, some texture to it as it kind of lays on there and overlaps itself and rips. Now you can see it's completely upside down there, and as you bring it out of the water, it becomes like immediately pretty rigid. Uh, and it just, it's not as, you know, free flowing like this, obviously. See, it's out of the water now, but once you bring it back in, now you can kind of work with it some more. And again, I try not to be too rough with it, but when it gets kind of flipped over like that, you kind of have to work with it a little bit. And it really is just kind of one of those things you have to feel, uh, just kind of feel it for yourself. There's no real like step one, step two kind of thing, uh, or, you know, a foolproof plan, I guess. So really the best way to do it is just to kind of go for it. Now, the most difficult part for me, I think, is this step where it's all removed from this piece of plastic. I don't know if you can see this really well, but there's a, a clear piece of plastic that was on the front of the image. And that's what, you know, is on the very front surface of the Polaroid. So it's kind of difficult to get the rest of it because once you've got all of this, you know, it's, it's all off except for one edge. And this is to me where things get a little more difficult. And sometimes I'll just kind of have to push a little bit of pressure and use basically just like the flat end of the brush and kind of push it this way rather than dragging across the top. So for this, I'm actually gonna try and use one of these smaller brushes and try to get a little bit closer to the surface just to kind of help separate that. Um, other things I've done in the past is I'll actually kind of grab it by this piece of plastic and lift it out of the water and sometimes that weight itself kind of helps it separate some more, but Again, you know, I'm okay with the emulsion ripping from time to time and kind of having that distressed look when it's finished and dried on the paper, but, uh, you know, I don't want to rip the entire thing. So, so this little brush is helping, kind of helping getting the rest of it off of there. And like I said, I'm kind of pushing at the edges of it like this rather than trying to, you know, brush over top of it. So... Let's see. And the longer it's in the water, the more it kind of separates on its own. But I feel like if you just let it do it on itself or by itself without actually, you know, kind of moving things along, you might be sitting here for a while. Okay. See, I think I may have just poked a hole in the emulsion with this tiny brush. You know, it's a little bit more 
rigid with it being so narrow and pointy, but we'll see. Let me use this other brush to kind of help throw the water this way. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, the middle of the emulsion here in the center of the frame at the top, that's actually been removed. So now we just kind of need to work our way to the edges just to kind of get that separated here. Man, it is really stuck on there. I'm using Impossible Project Film, and I've heard that obviously the longer the image has been on this emulsion, basically the longer it's been since you've shot the image, that it can be a little bit more difficult to actually get the emulsion to lift off of this piece of plastic, which makes sense. I mean, it's all chemicals in there that are drying, and, you know, I can understand why that would be. I shot this image on Impossible Project Film back in 2013, I believe, maybe 2014, but it's definitely been a couple years, so. Okay, we've got this corner removed. We're almost to the step where we'll actually put it onto the paper, and that's when things can get kind of interesting. Almost got it. basically just kind of peeling it back at the edge now just using the very tips of the brush to kind of almost roll it back all right we're almost there okay I think we are officially removed okay so as you can see this clear piece of plastic it's got some of this white dried flaky uh, stuff that came off the back of the film and again that's why I used two separate trays although I've probably <laughs> splashed some of it into this tray but uh, this tray here has a ton of kind of dried up uh, flaky uh, chemicals in the bottom of the tray and I want to keep that off of the emulsion as I transfer it onto the paper so I'm going to set this off to the side okay so to transfer it onto the paper uh, the first thing I like to do is kind of make sure it's going to be easy to grab and whenever you take it out of the water it becomes very stiff and sometimes it's kind of tricky to do that if it's not already flat on the paper. So what I'm going to do is try and slide this paper underneath it and kind of just pinch basically at the top of it, lift it out of the water, and then put it into the colder tray. Um, I have noticed that with the colder tray, it seems like the colder water, it kind of sets up a little bit easier or a little quicker than uh, in the warm water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And actually I'm gonna kind of pull some of this out. I saw a couple of those little flakes. I try to keep it as clean as possible, but obviously with it, you know, coming out of this tray, some of that is gonna be carried over as it's sitting on top of it, but, all right. So we're gonna kinda slide this underneath, and I'm gonna use this part of the brush to kinda help guide it so it doesn't overlap itself. And this is a tricky part. <laughs> it's such a delicate thing. It's really stronger than, you know, it seems like it would be, but it's still kind of nerve-wracking because, again, not only will you not have an emulsion lift, a proper one, if you rip the entire thing in half, you also just wasted a Polaroid. So, all right. Right about there. As long as it's roughly on the page, we can recenter it and restructure it and all of that. So we're gonna lift it out of the water, and there we go. Now it's on there. With this, I'm gonna use this brush to kind of brush off some of those white flakes that are on top. 
of the emulsion. And you can see just adding a little bit of water as it's out like this, you can flatten out, straighten out the creases, and uh, you know, you don't have to worry about trying to get it perfect. And as you can see, as I kind of dip it into the water like this, just that corner, that helps kind of straighten it out a little bit. So you can do that if you feel like it could be flatter. Just dip it in the water and straighten it out that way. Let's try it with this corner. It's pretty, pretty wrinkled up. There we go. Just kind of scooping it into the water like that, that helps the water get underneath it and basically lift it off the paper. There we go. Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting closer to kind of what I'm looking for here. Now, I want it to be a little bit more centered. If you get some more water under there, it's a little bit easier to kind of slide it. But that's good enough. Straighten this out a little bit. Right there. It's a really fun process. And it's just unlike anything else, um, in my opinion. So I'm always telling people to try it out. If they like to shoot instant film, it's, it's worth a shot. I've never actually done it with anything but uh, integral film, which is, you know, impossible project, Polaroid film, any film that it's, you know, ejected out of the front of the camera, um, or the top of the camera, whatever the model is, but it's the kind that, you know, you sit there and you watch it develop in your hand. Um, from what I know, it's not possible to do it with Instax film, which is a bummer because I have a ton of Instax film that I've shot and, uh, I could, you know, use for emulsion lifts, but, um, you know, I think it's just something in there chemical process. It just doesn't work the same that Polaroid and Impossible Project film. Uh, but you can also do it with peel apart film or pack film, you know, like FP 100 C or Polaroid 669, 667, any of those kind of films. But I've never actually tried that myself. So maybe I'll try that in a future video. All right. I'm going to get this away from the warm water that has all the stuff in it and focus more on the cold water. And maybe this will help it kind of slide over because it's gonna, I feel like it makes the emulsion a little bit more rigid. So we're gonna slide this kind of out of the way. Focus more on this one here. So you notice whenever I get water under it, it stays pretty flat. It doesn't curl so much like the, the emulsion does in the warm water. Now, let's see. Can try to slide it over. See, it lays pretty flat with this, but I want to slide it over, but I'm there. We go now, it's sliding. So, if you get more water on there, it'll slide around a little bit more, and you can kind of rotate it, but as you do that, oh, we've got an edge over here. Let's get this back on the paper. And see, as you kind of brush that water out from underneath it, you know, it doesn't slide around as easy. So we're going to basically just grab it there. <laughs> Hope it doesn't rip. Here we go. Now it's more centered. All right, now we're good. So now I'm going to go back to kind of flattening things out. And there's a tiny, tiny little rip right over here. And because it's not perfect now, that one little rip would just drive me crazy if that was the only little rip or only little imperfection. So I'm just going to mess this thing up. Um, not too much, but I'm going to have some fun with it. I feel like I'm Bob Ross talking about happy little accidents or happy trees or you know if I was a real artist I could come up with something to say about destroying something beautiful or <laughs> something deep but I'm not that deep all right so we're gonna get rid of that brush it's centered enough for me it doesn't have to be perfect and like I said I'm gonna mess this thing up anyway 
So I'm gonna take this fine brush that's a little more stiff and I'm just gonna start kind of working at the edges and creating a couple little wrinkle effects and letting things dry that way just to kind of see what kind of looks I can get. Like I said, I like seeing those physical effects on there because, you know, it just stands out more that it's not just a, a photo that's printed onto this piece of paper, you know, but it's actually something that's been manipulated there and it's got some texture to it, so. I'm gonna bring that up. There we go. Nothing too crazy, just just enough to add some shape and some dimension to it. Oh, see that? That's a rip. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of work with it a little bit. So it's not just a straight across rip, but more so a uh, kind of jagged edge to it. There we go. Now once I get done with all of this, I'll take that bigger brush again and just kind of flatten things out. Because even with these wrinkles, I just kind of want it to lay good and flat. So let's bring, let's see, let me bring that top down. The top was looking a little flat compared to everything else. And I'm pretty happy with that kind of push some of these other wrinkles in here and kind of move it around. And that's, you know, pretty good to me. Let's see, take this, kind of brush over it. Make sure I get any of those white flakes off. Kind of let it hang over the tray at one point like this, just like you would with a darkroom print to let the water run off to one corner. And I would say that's pretty much finished. One thing I'm noticing as I'm kind of finishing this up, um, the, the bubbles will start to pop up in some of these creases. And way to fix that, keep the brush from being too wet. And uh, as you're kind of just brushing things out, it kind of helps pull that air and water out to the edge and then run off of the corner of the image. You know, over time, if you let that air bubble kind of dry up like that, you uh, have a risk of, you know, obviously it drying with air underneath it and then it can crack and which, you know, if you're going for something like this that's not exactly perfect, then maybe that's not a big deal to you, but just thought I'd mention it. But yeah, that's pretty much how you do an emulsion lift. All right, so that's pretty much it on the emulsion lift. Uh, you know, I had a lot of fun doing this. It's been years since I've done it. And honestly, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I didn't know what my results were gonna be since it had been so long, but it was a lot of fun for me. I'm happy with how it looks and hopefully it's helped you guys as well. So if you have any questions at all about this process, or even if you have some tips for me or for other people watching the video, anything maybe I didn't mention in the video that you think would be helpful, definitely leave those in the comments. And uh, I might end up selling this on Instagram or something. I don't really have a need for it. Um, I like the way it turned out, but you know, I like uh, sharing stuff like this with people. So maybe check this out on Instagram, it might be for sale. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, again, leave them in the comments and hopefully this was helpful. So thank you guys as always for watching and I'll see you guys next time.